What if Victor Frankenstein created a camera in 2024? Dr. Stein! Okay, I had to admit this, it's a little embarrassing, but up until this point, <laughs> I always thought that Frankenstein was the name of the monster, uh, but obviously Victor Frankenstein is the scientist which created the monster, and he referred to him as Adam. Fun fact. Fujifilm has absolutely gone insane. The amount of tech that's in the GFX 100 Mark II is mind-blowing. Now, yes, I am gushing over this camera just a little bit, but bear with me. There are still some concerns and some head scratches from this camera. Uh, now it's randomly on my face. <laughs> so in this video, I will be only focusing on the video side of things. This is not a photography channel, though this is a very powerful stills camera. There's plenty of other videos that are out there that focus on stills, but there's still not a lot of videos that focus on the video side of this camera. And then I'm gonna wrap all this up and then answer the question, is this worth buying? So stick around, like this video if you're excited like me, and subscribe if you haven't already. So uh, let's jump right into it. Now with Fujifilm's introduction to F-Log2, it has become one of my favorite log curves to grade. The X-H2 has really showed filmmakers how powerful a Super 35 stack sensor can be. The beautiful highlight roll-offs, the noise pattern that feels like grain, and the rich depth in the colors. Now the same could be said with the GFX Mark II. And coupled with this multi-format sensor, it has inherently become Fujifilm's medium format and full frame camera all at once. There is something truly special and beautiful to be able to stop down your lens to a T4, T5.6 on this larger sensor and still get a beautiful fall off and still retain sharpness so it can make it easier for us ACs to focus. You know what I mean? Now, funny enough, in terms of lenses, I really just start using all of my anamorphic lenses. I have so many anamorphic clips with this camera that I kind of missed out shooting some more spherical imagery. Though I have lenses that actually cover it, there's something really beautiful about the anamorphic look on this sensor. And man, I, I just want to shoot a whole short film or something with just anamorphics with this camera. Now, I didn't do a lot of side-by-side -side shots of the X-H2S with the GFX, but honestly, looking at the footage, it looks just like the X-H2S, which is not a bad thing. So the main question I've been getting for the, over the last couple of weeks is, what's the dynamic range like? And I totally get that question because when you think about medium format, you think about this incredible bit depth and richness and tonality to the image, but really that's just the stills world, especially for this camera. When it comes to medium format for video, it's a little bit different and a lot more similar to the X-H2S. Now, I do have to say my opinion on dynamic range and everyone's interest in that with modern day cameras because you can get 13 stops, 14 stops, this, that, and the other 16 stops out of sub $10,000 cameras. It's become like the talk and the end all be all for most people. But I do have to say that dynamic range is not just a camera characteristic. There's so many things that you as the filmmaker have control over, lighting, NDs, gradient in these, all these different things, the color grade. There's so many things that can push and pull the dynamic range of the camera that affect it down the pipeline outside of it just being 13 stops, 14 stops. So that being said, I'm not hanging my hat on dynamic range when it comes to the camera. There are way more important things the camera needs to do. So when I talk about it has less dynamic range than the X-H2S, that's not a disappointing thing in my opinion. All right, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Audio. So I've been using Audio for about three or four months now and the experience has been really solid. I've really been liking how they've been bringing new and fresh new music as you should as for a music platform, um, especially with the new tools I've been rolling out like with Link Match, which is essentially you can just take a song that you like on Spotify or Apple Music, paste that into it and you'll find a similar song, not the exact same 
custom song, but a similar song that you can use for your videos. Very useful. The sound effects library is getting bigger and better every time. And they just have really top notch music options available to listen to and use. What I really want to tell you about is Audio is offering their lifetime membership, which is originally $500 for only $200 if you use the code CINE199. $200 does seem like a lot of money. However, if you are using this like I am on my professional jobs, this essentially will pay it off in no time. And now you have a library for life, for your personal use case, for social media, or for client work. Also, side note, if you do like any of the music I've been choosing for my last videos, there is a playlist along with the link for signing up for audio as well in the description, top link. So check that out. I think I have some good options in there. Okay, cool. I'm done. Thanks again, Audio, for sponsoring this video, and let's move on. All right, so now comparing the XH2S, this is not so much comparing the video quality uh, because, to be honest, the XH2S is actually the better camera. Yes, this is a bigger sensor, but bigger doesn't always mean better. That's what she said. You still have a little bit more dynamic range out of this camera, however you want to see that. You have a faster readout speed because it is such a large sensor and it does improve once you crop into 4K in the 35mm mode. Uh, when it comes to F-Log2, the base ISO for the GFX is actually 800 and the base ISO for the X-H2S is 1250. Now here's the really odd part that I still don't know what Fujifilm is doing. It's been over a year with this camera and we haven't had a real significant update and since then we've had this camera release the xs20 this is what i'm filming on now and actually these two cameras these two here share a lot of the update features that we've been asking for for the xh2s for example it has a red box indicator this doesn't it just still has a blinking red light not the end of the world but you know you would think Flagship camera, still don't have any features there in terms of like that. Exposure tools, this actually has vector scale, wave format, and RGB. This camera doesn't. The X-S20 doesn't either. So this is the only camera that does. Now, if this is one of Fujifilm's reasons to, for you to jump to this camera, that's actually really silly in my opinion. You made a powerhouse camera here. It should share all the features as you build this ecosystem of hybrid video cameras, right? Fujifilm has finally given us tap to focus subject tracking. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> I'm very excited, but also very confused as to why it's in this camera and not the X-H2S. But before I get to that part, let me explain how it works, how do you enable it, and is it actually any good? Now the subject tracking performs Okay, it feels like it's still in its infant stage. It's not very sticky and casting a wide net doesn't seem to help. Actually, you can't even adjust the box to either make it smaller to be more specific or wider to actually cover a larger area. As you can see here, it actually tracks anything that comes across it, which doesn't make any sense. If I tap on a subject, I want it to hold that subject no matter what comes into frame. Again, sort of like Sony, but I understand it's the first iteration of this technology in any Fujifilm camera, so I'm sure it's going to improve over time. The box seems erratic, it doesn't seem to settle, and what I'm noticing is that the tap to focus tracking is separate of the AI AF modes in the camera as well. And if you don't know what that is, you have like bird, cat, or animal, human, train, cars, all of those settings are separate of the subject tracking. It doesn't combine the two. So with this car model, I would have thought that the AI tracking for car mode would kick in with the subject to tap, uh, tap to tap to focus subject tracking to make it more secure but it's, that's not the case. It doesn't have the same recognition. As you can see here, the box gets larger because it's trying to recognize the car in the car subject tracking mode. But if you switch it over back to the tap to focus subject tracking, I'm getting his name so confused. You know what I mean though. If you switch it over to the other mode, it's just a green box and that green box just never sticks to what I'm trying to have it focus on. So again, like I said, it's in the infant stage and I, do hope it comes to the other Fujifilm cameras, especially the X-H2S. Now here's my gripe with this feature. 
and it being in this camera. Other manufacturers don't make G-mount native AF lenses for Fujifilm, only Fujifilm does. And they don't have a lot of lenses for this camera for video. They're all primarily still lenses. Not putting that new technology in your previous cameras in the X-mount bodies, because you have a plethora of X-mount lenses to use that are much better for video AF, in my opinion, it's just a it's a weird place to put it when you don't have your mass amount of people using it to give you better feedback only a small few people are going to use this camera because of the price it's seventy five hundred dollars and then you're getting a lens that's going to be two three thousand dollars on top of that and that's not really made for that type of camera and nobody really uses Fujifilm G lenses for video anyway. So it's strange. It's very strange to see it. And again, maybe it's that whole put in your best camera and you trickle down. I hope that's the case. I am clinging on to hope that we see it in the next summit coming up this year, that they bring out new firmware for the X-S2S, the X-S2, the X-T5, you name it. All those cameras need to have this feature and improve on it. Okay, my rant is done. So speaking of lenses, what other lenses can actually cover this sensor? I have here with me is the Harfumi's terrible name, but I got it on Amazon. It's the cheapest medium format PL mount I've seen. PL is the way to go. And currently what lenses that cover, like I said, any full frame lenses, that's in the PL mount. My Nisi Athenas are Vista Vision. They cover the sensor, especially the Permista, Permista mode, which is Vista Vision. And then you can also adapt, you know, 645 lenses that can cover the sensor. So your Mamiya's, your Pentaxes. So those are the options you have out there. Still not a ton, but it's not bad. DZO covers Vista Vision as well, Tokina. So you have your options from cheap vintage lenses to middle of the road vintage lenses to high end cine lenses as well. So you still have decent options. Surprisingly, this little guy here, the Carl Zeiss Yena 20 mil, this lens almost covers the full width of the sensor in GF mode. There is some vignetting on the corners, as you can see. So I was actually very pleased to see that. Multi-format sensors. This is something that I really like to see in cameras and they should do more of this rather than just having 16 by nine. So in the case of the GFX, you have again, a plethora of options. But let me just rattle off a few things that I've noticed when questions are coming in about this camera. One, no, you can't film an open gate on the medium format mode, which is the GF mode. You can only get the width, not the height. Two, for all those who care about AK, in this camera, there is a crop in all the 8K modes. There's either going to be a 1.4 crop or a 1.5 crop. That roughly sits between full frame and Super 35. It's slightly bigger than Super 35 and slightly smaller than full frame. There is a 4K 3x2 full frame crop mode. There is no Super 35 mode in this camera. It stops at full frame. There are additional resolution options that vary in each of the resolution modes. <laughs> so in the GF mode, it has a 5.8K Cine mode that gives you the entire width of the sensor at 235 to 1. In Permista mode, you have a 5.4K at 17 by 9. And there is a slight crop at 1.07, which is not terrible actually. And in the full frame mode, there's a 4.8K at 3x2 and a 4.8K at 16x9. Why does this matter? I just find it very interesting. That's all. I just wanted to just share that. So when it comes to recording media, you have quite a few options with this camera now. But for this one specifically, yes, you can use an SD card for some of the codecs to record for video. It's going to unlock if you use a CFast Express Type B card. I use the OWC CFast Express Type B cards, really built really well. I know everybody loves Angelbird. Just so you know, I was on Angelbird years ago, and I just kind of like that they've gotten really popular over time. So shout out to y'all, miss y'all. One day we'll work again together. And of course, you can record RAW out to either to record to ProRes RAW with the Atomos monitors or B-RAW. But if you want to record to an external drive, here's how you do that. When it comes to the body style of this camera, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a tank, it's built really well, the materials are nice, 
My favorite thing about this camera is the detachable EVF. Though this EVF is amazing, it's huge, it's bright, it's beautiful. This looks a lot better in my opinion with no EVF at the top. Um, and then it's just kind of this rectangle block, very reminiscent of the FX3, the FX30, those types of cameras. Obviously it's not trying to be that, but Fujifilm, if you would make a Super 35 version with a detachable EVF, because I never use this, I don't use this for a photo which is actually a shame, it has a really good sensor in it. Overall, the button layout is quite nice, um, though I'm very used to having a D-pad on the X-H2S, it's, just na it's way better to navigate the menus rather than this little joystick. And then, this is probably the most weakest area of this camera, the joystick on here does not give you any assurance that you're, or confidence that you're clicking into something to select something. Now, yes, you can take your thumb off and then hit okay on the back here, but that's just, it's just a waste. There's so much space here that they could have just added a D-pad, in my opinion. Um, it wouldn't take away from the look of this camera. It's still elegant. It has this nice sloping lines and all that stuff, but a D-pad will just make life a lot better. Because how I have my D-pad set up, and I made a video about this, these are all quick shortcuts to different settings when it comes to autofocus, stabilization, all that. Instead, you have three buttons in the front of the camera here that you can toggle between. And I like this, but I wish it was in combination of a D-pad. All right, let me move on from this. I'm just ranting now. Now, when it comes to rigging this camera, there's a few options out there already for kind of sleek cages and such. I opted in to do the mid-49 universal cage. You've seen this cage before. I used it on the Blackmagic full frame camera as well. There are some interesting things with it, but I really like how it locks the camera in from the bottom, so there's really no twisting. I wish it was a little bit more conformed to the camera a bit, but having all the options for the top handle, the natal rail, all the quarter 20s, it just makes it a lot easier to rig. Um, that's the downfall of having cages that are a lot tighter to the body is just you add a lot of things to that body and it becomes harder to hold or you know build properly so having the universal case and it being up and around the camera makes it a little bit easier to build so yeah that's what i use for rigging so as an xh2s owner would i buy this camera yes but not to replace my xh2s Here's why. I think there's a clear use case for both cameras, the X-H2S and the GFX 1-2. Both can stand alone as an A camera or support either one, depending how you are using it. Yes, there are advantages of a larger sensor in some instances, but the way that they built the X-H2S and, and its speed and reliability and all these other things, not to say the other camera isn't reliable, but this camera is just a powerhouse of a Super 35 camera that can do a lot. Throw a speed booster if you need a, a wider field of view and you're golden. On the flip side, Fujifilm has created such an amazing system for their GFX and giving medium format on a much lower price point than any other competitor out there, Hasselblad, Phase One, you name it. Um, this, is, this has become a really interesting turning point for them and allowing uh, really great video features in a camera like this. I think that justifies the price. You have 102 megapixels with amazing um, image quality and then you can translate that to really good video quality as well. Yes, there are some drawbacks. So if you're not confident in how you're gonna utilize a camera like this, I wouldn't recommend getting it. Like, just be smart about it. It is still a lot of money. It's about 10 grand to really get yourself up and running with a camera like this. But just as Fuji is creating these cameras, they are hybrid cameras and you can push the limit for them like I have with my X-H2S and a video production workflow, but you're gonna run into some issues and you just gotta be willing to live with those things. But, you know, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I'm very curious to get my hands on this again, like I've been mentioning, because I do have a few ideas and a few looks I wanted to achieve with this camera. And uh, hopefully I get my hands back on it. Cool. All right. I'll catch you guys on the next one. A good shop again, life to the sheep, least nice, but nah, he ain't nice underneath. Got a price on a leash, I don't trust when he speak. Be sound a real spite for the meat. Boy, I bleed with the best, got the people, the eagle and downs, I done feed with the flesh, trying to smeag with the race. She believe that I'm blessed, got a speed to the left. All of my clothes, I be eager to mess, oh no. Might put her on a roster. I bet she gon' dread it, take all my betters, run through it like betters, might make her a tenant. The way that she moving it, highly attentive. She speak a little Spanish, and so does a man, I can tell by his panic, a full blow, and I like a galaxy, must be the battery.